Antlow again and here we are back in my garage for the next episode about the green Z650 project. Now at the end of the last episode I took the engine cases, the sump, the cam cover and the barrel over to a local company Camcoat who are going to give it a high tech silver ceramic finish. I'll get those parts back in about two weeks time in the new year. Right now we're in that sort of dead time between Christmas and New Year where not much is happening but I can still get a fair bit done with the project in the meantime so at the moment I've got two parts here of the engine that I've got to do some work with and the first one is here and this is the clutch basket as you can see and Kawasaki Z650s and indeed 750s do have a small problem with the clutch basket when they get old and as luck would have it Jeff has come up with a solution to that problem so I will let him explain what he's going to do with his clutch basket when I go and see him in a few days time because he's got a uh, solution to that problem next to me here I have got another part of the engine and so here we have the second part which is the clutch cover which as you can see has a, a polished outer part but it's mainly black so this has to be fully polished to match with the rest of the engine so I'm now gonna have to strip off all the paint and spend no doubt many an hour polishing the cover I've got to do the same thing with the uh, the old center cover which is currently boxed away somewhere and also the points cover which I've not got yet because we drilled a hole in the points cover that uh, came with the engine so I've still got to buy one of those not found one yet on eBay the ones I found are all smashed and crashed and battered so I'm just waiting to find a good one before we can move forward with that particular part so let's crack on then and so we'll apply the paint stripper and wait a few minutes and hopefully it'll do its job and we'll soon have this case looking all silver and nice this one actually doesn't look too bad it's not corroded too much unlike the uh, engine cases themselves so hopefully this should look pretty good once I've got the paint off but we'll see we'll see and so now here we are it's half an hour later and it's now raining so this will be quite a quick video I think but let's have a look yes that's getting the paint off pretty well look at that that's a lot easier than doing it on the engine cases that's for damn sure right so I'm pretty happy with that doesn't show any particular damage that I can see so this is going quite well actually better than I thought right so let me carry on in the rain I can't do this inside because it makes such a huge mess and it also stinks you don't want to be getting too close to this uh, paint stripper the fumes are quite potent and it's much better to do it outside where it's safe right so I'll crack on with this in the rain and come back when I finished and now as you can see at last I've got all the paint off this cover and the next task is to remove all the corrosion and nicks and scratches in the aluminium and to do that reboring I've got to use wet and dry sandpaper I'm starting off with 250 and then going up to 400 600 800 and so on until eventually it's all pretty good with an even finish with no nicks and scratches anywhere at which point I can either polish it with auto soil or use a polishing mop I'm not sure yet which one I'm going to do but the time is going to be to remove these gouges in the aluminium piece that one there now to remove that I'm going to have to remove all the aluminium around it to lower the surface to remove this, this little scratch here and the same with that and that and anywhere else we find a problem on the aluminium so yeah really boring you've just got to spend hours and hours you can see now if you that there that scratch there, that sort of little gouge all the way down there I've got to remove that and it will take me hours if anybody knows a better way of doing it than just using wet and dry sandpaper I'd love to know because it's just a, again a very tedious boring job but it's got to be done, it's got to be done Right, that scratch is now gone, and now I've got to do the same thing for that, 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 around here, and indeed the whole of the cover. Whew. So come back when I finish. And so after a few hours of work with the wet and dry sandpaper, I've got it looking reasonable. I think this could still do with being put on the polishing mop to really bring out a shine, but that's enough work for me for today. But now I'm going to move on 
and work on this cover. Of course, this is the alternator cover, so job one is to remove the alternator, or the windings anyway, which I've already started to work on. I'm not sure if this, these uh, windings are still good, or whether I've got to replace them. They don't look in very good condition, but you never know, you never know. So uh, let's get these three bolts out, which hold it in place, and hopefully we'll come out okay. Right, that's a bit of effort, but I did get the windings out eventually by heating up the case gently for a while, and it came out. So there you go. And there's the case, seen better days. So now, I've got to polish that. And so after about an hour or so of hard work with wet and dry sandpaper at various grades, followed by some auto sold metal polish, that's how it looks. It's still not perfect, there's still some marks in there, so a little bit more work and it should be ready to be uh, put on the polishing mop to give it that final shine. And so finally for now we've got this, the sprocket cover, which also needs polishing, it's actually not too bad, it shouldn't take too much work to get that nice and shiny again. As you can see here we've still got the clutch activation lever built in, so I'll leave that well alone, no need to uh, remove that, just leave it there for now. And so I'll get this polished and that's the polishing done at least for now. And so with the sprocket cover polished it's now time to move on to something more interesting. And so let's now move on and go and see Jeff in his workshop where we're making a start on fixing a problem with the clutch basket. And we start off where he's grinding off the back plate of the clutch basket to gain access to whatever's inside. So before we go over there, I must apologize because while we were filming, it was during a heavy rainstorm and the noise of the rain on the roof is pretty bad, but there's not much we could do about that at the time. So let's just go over there now and we'll kick off with him grinding off the rivets from the back plate. Go. Yes. Yeah, that's sweet. If you tap them, like, once you get them done, mm -hmm. a little tap and it just... You can see it moving. It, you, you just, yeah, you can see it's broke the... Uh... The weld, yeah. I think there's three little sections. We'll see now when we okay, flick it off. hopefully flick it off. Yes, without any problems. Uh, a couple of very. I don't want to break my screwdrivers. And... No. Let's go for me. I think we've actually got to run Oh, out. there. That's it. There you go. So let's off. see what's underneath. There we go. Ah. So there's the plate. Ah, there's them little plungers with the springs. Right. This. So you've got like a, a round grommet with an oval centre and it's those that's worn. Yeah, you can actually see in there now. Yeah, let me do that. So if you move it, yeah, I think it shouldn't be moving like that. No. They look all right then. You can yeah. see they've got, in fact, a file. They've just got a bit of a lump each end. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's more like a kidney, a kidney, shape. kidney bean shape yes. sort of yes. thing that fits around them yes. pillars. Yeah. So you, we'll, even there, they're, war, they're, they're, they're quite worn on them. So those rubber grommets will be replaced by by you yeah. making um, But what happens is if, if you put a, if, if you take some off there, put a tube on it, it crushes them back. Right. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's still gonna wear again. Mm -hmm. But a lot of these things from th these bikes, they probably had when people had seen they've probably been racing oh, yes, and yeah, drunk. Right. Yeah. But okay, if so you're just gonna ride them averagely now, which I'm sure we will. Most yeah. Then, uh, oh. then it should be okay. Right, well, my camera batch is running out right, right now. So what we're going to do is make some sleeves with the yes. tube that go in there. They're only going to be about a millimetre thick. Right. You'll tap in, press in there. Yes. Trim the rubbers and then press it all back right. together. Right, so it sort of compresses yeah. the rubbers back to it'll, how it should be. It'll push, it'll just push them in. Um, just enough. And I've, I've done a few of these. Yes, and it works quite but, well. You know. Right, well, we'll uh, have to end it here because my battery's yeah. running out. So and we'll come back we'll, another day, we'll hopefully a warmer day, when you've done that work and we can see the result. Uh-huh. Okay, great stuff. 
and now here we are back in my garage again. So we'll leave you to carry on the work to fix that clutch basket. In the meantime, I've still got an awful lot of work to do on the 650. And I can't put it off anymore. I've got to work on the electrical system, and in particular, this lot. This is, there you go, there's a bit falling off. This is the wiring harness and God knows what else that I took from the bike. And I must say, I didn't spend a bit there for too much time being very careful to remove it all. I just cut it all off because it's such a in such a bad state. So I think I will have to build my own wiring harness and get it on the bike. So to that end, I have bought myself a little bit of kit, some new kit, all the way from Germany. It's due here any day now, and it's kind of like a, a simplified version of an M unit, which I've used before. But this isn't made by Motor Gadget, no, no, this is made by a German chap called Axel Joost, or Joost. He's got some cool uh, YouTube videos which explain how his uh, kit works, how his little boxes work, and hopefully, when I get it here, it should be quite easy to fit and from that kit I can then build up the wiring harness from scratch. So to that end then, I have made a couple more purchases recently and one of them concerns the coils. Now here we have, here we have one of the coils, nothing wrong with it, it seems to work okay but they are almost what 50 years old now, 40 odd years old anyway, so I was thinking of replacing them with a pair of coils from Dyna. Dyna coils, I've used them on most of my bikes, I've used them on the uh, 1170, the Mark II, you know, the uh, Harley, I've got my Harley's got Dyna coils, you know, because they're really good, very high performance and they work really well. Only problem is, they're quite expensive and a pair of Dyna coils for the bike is something like £200 plus. So it was suggested to me that rather than spend £200 plus on a pair of Dana coils, there are some coils out there from an existing bike that are very similarly spec to a pair of Dana coils, but they're much, much cheaper. So I was told, or advised, I should say, to buy myself a pair of these. These things here, they don't look much different, do they? But these are coils from a Honda Blackbird, a Honda Blackbird 1100 and uh, they are very very good spec they put out something like 30,000 volts which is similar to a pair of Dyna coils of course they got these weird plug leads here because I guess they go down into the can cover which we don't need so we'll have to take these off and fit something a bit more appropriate what I don't know yet is how difficult they'll be to fit so over here I've got the old coil here and the new coil there it's a lot smaller so no doubt the the mounts will, will be different I mean I've got two mounts there yeah look at that so all I've got to do is make some kind of adapter bracket to mount these coils to the existing frame mounts and that's what we're doing in the next few hours so that's what we've got to do what else we've got here I've got a oh, horn and I've also got somewhere down here I can find it I've got a new pair of switches, switch gear for the handlebars. Bought these a while ago, they're quite good actually, they're uh, metal, metal housing, which you don't always get, and they seem pretty good and were quite cheap. The slight problem is, they don't come with any instructions, so you've no idea what these wires actually do. So I've got to check it all out. That said, that said, the switches that came on the bike aren't too bad, they've been polished. Let me grab it out of this box here, and find one, there you go. So there's the throttle side with the throttle and those cables and this rather tired looking god yeah these uh, wires don't look too happy do they but we should be if possible I might be able to save this and uh, just to rewrap them I will check to make sure all these switches actually still work but I would like to use the original switches partly because it means I can use original throttle as well, the original throttle, the, the uh, original throttle assembly is built into the switch gear so it'd be nice if I could retain that and keep it so we'll see, we'll see about that. So now what I've got to do is to remove the tank from the bike and work out what kind of adapter plates I need to make to mount these coils which come from as I say a Honda Blackbird 1100. So that's what's next. And so I've made this simple bracket just a strip of aluminium with three holes drilled in it that goes on there like that and then these two holes fit on the frame but before I can fit them I'm going to paint them black 
happen. So while we wait for the paint to dry on those two coil mounting brackets, I thought I'd make yet another bracket. And this time it's to replicate this thing here. And this is a seat latch for the uh, Mark II project. Just restored it with some new parts, looks pretty good. So it means I've got an old part here, a bit rusty, but I thought, oh, I could use that on the 650 because it also needs a seat latch because it doesn't have one. So what I've got to do is make a copy of this bracket here which bolts to the underside of the seat. So I measured it and guess what, they're not the same. I thought they would be, but they're not. So it doesn't really matter, I've measured it now. So uh, what I've done is I've got some off -cut of aluminium here. So I'm gonna cut it out, drill it, file it, and hopefully make a copy of this bracket here, but that'll fit on the 650 seat. And that's what's next. And so to start off, I made a simple template in cardboard to tell me the rough size I need to make. I've then got to drill two holes at each end to match the holes in the seat. And then I've got to drill two more holes to mount this latch to the bracket. Now, the standard bracket here has a step in it to give room for the uh, nuts underneath. So I have to mimic that somehow to mount this to my new bracket. But we'll come to that later on. So don't punch that, like that. Now I've got to measure very carefully where I want the other hole to be because I've got to get that right. And so with that done, I've now got to drill out the holes using my trusty hand drill, and here we go. And with that done, we now widen the hole out to 6.5 mil. Like that. Right, let's see this thing fits. Hopefully it will. Yeah, there you go. Got it right first time. And now we get to the boring stuff, which is hacksawing out the shape I want. So, come back when I finish. And so there's the bracket crudely hacksawed out of the alloy plate. And next I've got to shape it and make it look a bit neater. Right, so there's the bracket, pretty much shaped now. But I still need to mimic this step that's in the original bracket and to do that I've got myself these and these are spacers you can buy off ebay for about two or three pounds for ten and you can buy them in different colours different lengths very very handy very very useful so i've got a couple of 10 mils here like that and i think that should do the job of keeping the bracket away from the surface of the seat to give me clearance for the bolts that sit behind and so there's the latch fitted to the seat for the first time. Still needs a bit of work. I'm going to clean up a bit and paint it black, but that looks pretty good to me. I still need to buy the actual seat lock because I don't have one on the bike at the moment. And of course, I can't make one of them. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So let's take it off, make it look a bit better and paint it all black. And so now with the paint dry, that's the seat latch finished and on the bike. And I've got these Blackbird coils mounted on the frame and you might notice that I've got them mounted below this bracket rather than above because in the standard position which would be above here these coils just touched the tank when I tried to fit it. That shouldn't be a problem because there's plenty of room above the engine so it shouldn't really be an issue. And so that's two more small jobs done on the 650. But before we end this video a parcel's just turned up which has arrived all the way from Germany. And sure enough, in here is my new electrics box, which will be the center of the wiring harness when I build it on the bike. And this is the so-called D-Box from Axel Juiced. Now, if you look on YouTube, he does have some very clear videos which explain the various versions he's got and how you use it. So this is similar to the Motor Gadget M unit, which I've used before, but this one is obviously a lot smaller, a bit simpler, and unlike the M unit, this comes pre-wired, so you've got all the wires already installed on the D-Box. So I shall look forward to uh, finding out how this works. Hopefully I can work out uh, how to use it on the bike. And this will be the centre of the new wiring harness which I'm going to make for the bike. But we'll cover that in the next video because I'm sure this one's quite long enough. So that's it for now. So thanks for watching and cheers.